Okay, we're going to start applying uh, some vector thinking to lines and coordinate geometry. Um, one thing to consider is how much information is required to define any particular line in space. So usually you'd have used something like y equals mx plus c, where you have this gradient and you have this uh, intercept value you can use, but it can be written in any other form and there's lots of ways to actually write it. Um, but a line being um, a one-dimensional object requires one surplus, one extra piece of information. So any object in the universe needs a position to be in. And then because this is one-dimensional, it needs something else to tell us where the rest of it is. So there are two ways to think about this. One way is to think about, if I give you two points on this line, this is what Euclid did back in the day, there's only one straight path through them. There's only one direct path through them. So if I give you two points, there's exactly one line. So these are two points. There is exactly one line that could exist that joins them up, as long as we're working in flat space. In fact, that's kind of the definition of flat space. OK, so one way is to give you two points. The other way is to think about if I give you one point and I say from this point, you can only go in that direction and maybe backwards. So there's only one line that goes through that point in that direction, and that is this one. Now the benefit of this way of thinking about it, about, about a point in a direction, is that that doesn't depend on the number of dimensions you're in. You can write that in the same way in any number of dimensions. So we're no longer stuck to doing 2D coordinates. We can do any ge geometry or dimensions that we like. Uh, and direction has a really neat way of being written in vector form. So, let's say that this is the point, and in our coordinate system, that point is 3, negative 4, 7. Okay, so these are distances and directions from some origin that I've defined in space somewhere. Okay? And the line I want to think about is going that way. Now vectors are a very good way of describing that direction. So we could say that that direction is 5, 1, negative 1. But because this is a direction, the exact numbers don't matter. This could be any multiple of that. That direction is just as well described by 10, 2, negative 2 or negative 5, negative 1, 1. These three vectors are different vectors, but they're all parallel, which means they're all describing the same direction. And it's a direction that we care about. All of these, and in fact all the ones I haven't written as well, are a multiple of any of each other. So we just pick one as the one we're going to use. I'm going to use that one, I think. So these are all some multiple, some parameter. We Usually we use lambda but we can use other letters too, of 5, 1, negative 1. So this term here, multiplying a vector by a scalar, by a number, allows you to go as far as you like in that direction, and of course if this is negative you could also go backwards. So from this point I can go as far as I like that way, and as far as I like this way, and if I do that I will have the infinite line that goes through them. Wonderful. However, we've now got a coordinate and a vector. Well, you've seen before, I think, that you can write coordinates as vectors. So if I start at the origin, this is 3, negative 4, 7. That's how you get there from the origin. So the line R is this place in space, plus as many steps as you like, as many fractions of steps, or proportion, or any multiple of a step of this direction. And that firmly defines one line in space. All right? And that's quite a neat way. So you know that point is on the line and you can travel this direction as far as you like. And that will get you everywhere on that line. The vector equation of a line in as many dimensions as you like. There's nothing limiting these columns to be 10 or 12 or 100 rows tall. The function is the same. Place plus multiple of direction. And that is a line. Enjoy.